Hi friends, it's Kayla, Lala, whatever you like. Uh, if you've been around for a while, you know that my most anticipated reads of the year video is usually very long. And I talk about 40 to 50 titles that I'm excited to read in the upcoming year. Somehow this year I have 90. I want to start with the most exciting and end with the most exciting. So we're going to start with mystery thrillers and we're going to end with speculative SFF horror whatever and then in between we'll also cover some contemporary things anthologies and then I have a category for just like general sequels so that's what we're going to do today I'm just going to give you a couple words about each one I'm not going to read the entire synopsis because I already do that and also I will link all of these down below so you can read about them yourself starting off with thrillers and mysteries we've got the overnight guest by Heather Gudenkoff if they have a release date I'll put it here but that's always subject to change this is about a woman who receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm our main character is a true crime writer and she is at an isolated farmhouse where she's writing a book she then finds herself trapped inside the house and she finds someone or something outside Next up, we've got The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. This is about a woman staying in a Paris apartment. Shocker. She's broke and alone and goes to stay with her brother, but he is missing. As with Lucy Foley's books, we have a whole cast of characters. So we've got the socialite, the nice guy, the alcoholic, the girl on the verge, the concierge. Everyone's a neighbor. Everyone's a suspect. Then we've got The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. I didn't pick up their debut, but this one I am intrigued by probably because it's set in 1999, Y2K vibes. The crime involved in this story takes place at a blockbuster where we have four teens who are attacked. Only one of them survives, and then 15 years later, we're finding out the truth about the incident. Because current day, another four teenagers are attacked, and then the timelines, or the storylines, converge. Next up, I've got The Long Weekend by Jilly McMillan, which says, three couples, two bodies, one secret. We've got a girl's night at an isolated retreat, and while they're there, they find a note claiming that one of their husbands has been murdered. Next up is one of my favorite authors, Peter Swanson, and he has a new book called Nine Lives, where we have nine strangers who all receive a cryptic list with their name on it, and they start to die in unusual circumstances. I think our main character is an FBI agent, and she's trying to solve the crime, so... I'm intrigued. This one is an author I've never read from before. The book is called Blood Will Tell by Heather Chavez. And it says the twisty novel about the bond between two sisters and the crime one covers up to protect the other. Five years ago, there was an incident that tested their loyalty to one another. And now current day, there's something about a little girl being missing and one of the sisters perhaps is responsible. And there's something about a dangerous game in this book between like six friends. Another new author to me, Janice Hallett, has a book called The Appeal and it says in a town full of secrets someone was murdered, someone went to prison, and everyone's a suspect. Can you uncover the truth? The whole book seems to be documents and as you're reading you are meant to figure out the mystery. Next up is another Megan Miranda. This one's called The Last to Vanish. I actually haven't even read the synopsis, but I pick up every Megan Miranda. In this one, we are at a cozy upscale resort, and the book begins with a string of unsolved disappearances that have haunted the town. And then we have a journalist who's going to investigate the story, and he disappears himself. So we're following our main character, Abby, and she's solving all of the mysteries, I guess. Next up, we have an Alice Feeney. This cover reminds me so much of every vow you break i said i was on the fence about reading more alice feeney but this one is really intriguing it says it's a psychological suspense with a spectacular twist we're following a woman named daisy who's in town for her grandmother's 80th birthday the family hasn't been in the same place for over a decade and when the tide comes in they'll be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours when the tide goes back out, nothing will ever be the same because one of them is a killer. Dun, dun, dun. Next up, there's absolutely no information about this one, but Karen Slaughter has a new standalone coming in 2022 called Girl Forgotten. And that's all the information we have. Moving on to another author that I pick up every book from, The It Girl by Ruth Ware. I love a story about a dangerous friendship. And in this one, we have two characters, April and Hannah. April pulls Hannah into her dazzling orbit, but by the end of their second term together at Oxford, April is dead. Now, a decade later, my favorite thing, we have um, Hannah and her husband expecting their first child, and the man convicted of killing April has died in prison. But then someone comes knocking on her door with evidence 
that he wasn't really the killer and the mystery starts all over again next up we have summer's edge by dana mele which may be more of a horror i'm not totally sure it says i know you did last summer meets the haunting of hill house and then it says it's a thriller but it's about an estranged group of friends being haunted by their friend who died last summer a fire burned down they're having ghostly visions and they don't think that emily's death was an accident next up is another thriller but maybe it's horror i think this is kirsten white's adult debut if i'm not mistaken it's called hide and it says it's a high stakes hide and seek competition that turns deadly at an amusement park and that just sounds like so much fun so we're following a character named mac um i think there was something that happened in the past where she hid and her whole family died she was the only survivor and so now i think this competition is going to bring back some memories for her there's 14 competitors seven days but the competition is more sinister than anyone ever imagined next up on my radar is something called games for dead girls clearly all i want to read is game books and i'm getting a plethora of them popping up in my feed so i'm very excited Ooh, this one might be more like a horror too because it says we have two friends they're like 11 years old charlie and emily perform a ritual to try and summon the spirit of the Hythe church girl of urban legend but then their game goes tragically wrong when another girl is killed we've also got two timelines in here so past meets present when charlie returns to Hythe church as an adult to research a book on the folklore in the area but is drawn into the cases of several girls who have mysteriously vanished next up the upcoming megan golden is called stay awake our main character's name is Liv and she wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is or how she got there. She goes to walk into her apartment and someone else is living there. That's when she sees that her hands are covered in black pen scribbled messages like graffiti on her skin saying stay awake. Why does she remember nothing from the past two years and why is she running from a crime she doesn't remember committing? That just sounds so good. Next up, the 2022 release from Paul Tremblay is called The Paul Bearers Club. And it says, what if the coolest girl you've ever met decided to be your friend? We've got a main character named Art who's writing a book called The Paul Bearers Club, a memoir based on his experience being friends with this girl named Barbara in the 1980s. Apparently terrifying things happened to them in their friendship it says it blurs the lines between fiction and memory supernatural and mundane and about an unsettling friendship love an unsettling friendship maybe this is more horror than thriller but it i don't know then we've got one of my most anticipated reads of the year of course the house across the lake by riley sager in this we're following a character named casey who is recently widowed and an actress trying to escape her bad press so she goes to her family's lake house in vermont she passes the time by spying on her neighbors as you do and then one day casey has to save one of her neighbors from drowning and she learns more about the marriage of the people she's been spying on and then that new friend goes missing the synopsis calls it gasp worthy so we'll see next up another muchly anticipated one is the last housewife by ashley winstead I'm obsessed with the cover. It says it's a pitch black thriller about a woman determined to destroy a powerful cult and avenge the deaths of the women taken in by it, no matter the cost. We have a main character named Shay and her friend Laurel who were in the cult and now eight years later, she has built herself a new life. Then she finds out that her friend Laurel has died. So by recruiting the help of a podcast host, she goes back to the place she vowed to never return in search of answers. What you're not seeing behind the scenes of me filming this is I'm reading the synopsis. I've just read like five of them and they don't actually sound as interesting as I thought originally. This will probably end up being more like 80 titles by the end. Let's talk about anthologies and short story collections next because that'll be really quick to get through. I'm just gonna pop up the cover and then just the general theme. So we have Out There Into the Queer New Yonder. This is the third book in an anthology series and these are all going to be like future kind of fantastical speculative stories that are all queer next on my radar i have our shadows have claws which is a ya horror anthology Ooh, this one is a short story collection but it's all like combined there's no cover for it yet i mean like it's the same story but from a bunch of different perspectives it's called the grimoire of grave fates it takes place at a wizarding school and there are various students trying to track down the killer of a professor and each chapter is from a different perspective. Then I have Three Kisses, One Midnight, which is a trio of authors writing about witchy best friends. Okay, so some of these aren't short stories. Some of them are just like collaborative stories, my bad. Next though is called Eternally Yours. 
also no cover yet um, but it is all YA paranormal romance stories then I have the way spring arrives and other stories which is a collection of Chinese science fiction and fantasy in translation reclaim the stars which is all best-selling and acclaimed YA authors that take the Latin American diaspora to places fantastical and out of this world. Okay, that's two categories down. Now we'll move on to contemporary realistic fiction stuff. Um, this isn't a genre or category I pick up a lot. So all of these I'm picking up because they're from authors that I have read from before and I'm just interested to see their next thing. I have The Chosen One by Echo Brown. In this we're following Echo at her first year at Dartmouth College and the disappointments and triumphs of a black first generation college student. Then Queen of the Tiles by Hannah Alcalf is about Scrabble. We have a character who walks into her first Scrabble competition since her best friend's death with the intention to heal and move on with her life. And then it seems to also be part mystery because there are like clues that she starts receiving about her friend's death that she has to decipher. Next up I have Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno which just seems like the perfect light summer YA read for me. It says it's a love letter to books and summertime with a touch of magic. Um, we have a main character who just is always experiencing bad luck. Her mom has to sell their bookstore but then they spend the summer together and it's just like this amazing transformative season. Oh and then I haven't read from Raquel Marie because this is a debut but Ophelia after all is one of the most beautiful covers. Ophelia knows what she likes. Her best friends, Cuban food, rose gardening, and boys. But then she finds herself thinking more and more about a girl and she basically has to make the decision between clinging to this fantasy version of herself or actually accepting herself and her sexuality for what it is. Now let's get into a couple quick sequels. So my most anticipated continuations of series include Into the Riverlands by Neva, which is the third book in the Singing Hills cycle. We're always following a cleric named Chi who's learning about just like hearing different stories, experiencing different things, traveling around. In this one they're recording the tales of a notorious near immortal martial artist that haunts the region. If you haven't started this novella series, it is seriously one of my favorite things and I would highly recommend it. As far as other long lengthy novella series that I love we have We Were Children number seven. This is the only book on the entire list that I have to hold so I'll hold it right where I would put the graphic. It's called Where the Drowned Girls Go. Do I know the synopsis? In most of the other stories we have been at Eleanor West's home for wayward children and in this one we get to experience a different school with a different type of headmaster because our main character Cora is transferring from Eleanor West's to another and we'll just see what transpires there. Then we have a prequel companion story to Pet by Akweke Amezi which is called Bitter and that's the name of our main character who goes to a special school where she can focus on her painting surrounded by other creative teens but her friends want to pull her out of the safe walls of the school and into revolution? And Bitter isn't sure where she belongs, in the art studio or in the streets. Next up is Seasonal Fears by Shannon McGuire. Book two in the middle game series. Um, more of a companion book from what I understand. We're following Melanie and Harry and they're traveling down a road that will lead them through untold dangers towards a possible lifetime together. Uh, the middle game series is about like alchemy and godhood and twins. Another one of my favorite books of all time is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones which is getting a sequel which is very unexpected. Uh, it's called Don't Fear the Reaper and Jade returns to the rural lake town of Proof Rock the same day as convicted indigenous serial killer Dark Mill South escapes into town to complete his revenge killings. This category is going to be SFF. We have science fiction, fantasy, horror, anything speculative. Um, and I'm gonna split this up not by genre specifically but um, more by authors I've read from before and authors I'm reading for the first time. So much like sequels the reason that these are on my radar this first chunk is because I've read from the author before. I feel like I have a good chance of liking what's in here. Lake Lore by Anne Marie McLemore. We're following two non-binary teens pulled into a magical world under a lake. Anne loves writing 
water based stories there's always a body of water there's always a magical like transformation that happens in the water so it makes sense that finally they have a like pure water story the lines between air and water begin to blur and the world under the lake drifts above the surface next up is alone out here by riley redgate which has been one of my most anticipated things since it got announced just because it says it's Lord of the Flies in space and I've never heard anything that sounds more up my alley. Then we have this that came out of nowhere. It's called In a Garden Burning Gold by Rory Power. I never expected to see a fantasy series like this from this author, um, but it's about twins who have incredible magic and near immortality. For 100 years, they've been each other's only ally, defending each other and their younger siblings against their father's increasingly unpredictable anger. And now, twins have to take matters into their own hand and stop the entire world from crashing down. And then this one I am so much anticipating. It is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson, which is like a reimagined Carrie by Stephen King. It takes place at prom. I don't, there's no more information, but I have to have it. Then Emily St. John Mandel has a book coming up, one of my favorite covers, it's called Sea of Tranquility. Another book that takes place in the Canadian wilderness. We have storylines that are like two centuries apart. So we have one guy who heard this like magical violin or something in the woods. And then two centuries later, a famous writer is on a book tour. But there's also all of this like science fiction stuff going on because she technically lives on like the moon. And the story of that guy and the violin is in her book. And then we're also following a third perspective who's a detective trying to figure out something about this book and this violin boy and the synopsis is too smart for me to follow but i will be reading it another cover i love is an arrow to the moon i have been waiting for emily x Arpan to come out with something else it says it's romeo and juliet meets chinese mythology we have a boy who's very captivated by a girl there's a supernatural wind and family history and secrets next up is daphne by josh mallerman the synopsis is very strange it just says whatever you do don't think about daphne don't think about her at all it's a horror book it's about a woman stalking a high school basketball team and there must be some type of mental calling to her i don't know speaking of horror i have a ya one on my radar which is these fleeting shadows by kate alice marshall and it says the haunting of hill house meets knives out it's a bid for inheritance love and inheritance story we're following a girl whose grandfather has died she has never been to his like manor before but he has left her unexpectedly everything but she has to live in harrow hall for a year to get it and i think spooky things are gonna happen while she's there next up i've got just like home by sarah gailey one of my favorite covers this is another horror book and a spooky house we have a main character, Vera, who comes back to her childhood home where her father like murdered a bunch of people. And then someone is leaving her notes in her father's handwriting around the house. And there's like a spooky person living there. Ooh, more horror. I have Megan Giddings, The Woman Could Fly. Nope, The Women Could Fly. There's a cover. Last week there wasn't a cover. I'm about to see the cover. Okay, cute. It says it's horror, but I don't know if it's tagged right. Just kidding, when I clicked on that listing, it gave me the full synopsis. It's a piercing dystopian novel about the unbreakable bond between a young woman and her mysterious mother, set in a world in which witches are real and single women are closely monitored. Next up, T. Kingfisher has two things coming out next year. One of them is horror and one of them is fantasy. This one is What Moves the Dead, which is my absolute favorite cover of the year and it's a retelling of the fall of the house of usher which i'm just like absolutely dying over we're following a friendship between two people um alex a retired soldier receives word that their childhood friend madeline is dying there's a race to their ancestral home madeline is sleepwalking weird things are happening and there's a nightmare of fungal growths that possess the wildlife their fantasy book is called Nettle and Bone. I don't know that I've read this synopsis, but I added it just because T. Kingfisher is very intriguing to me. This says it's an enchanting adventure and is fantasy and fairy tale all combined. We have an abusive prince and two sisters. And one of the sisters meets with a grave witch who gives her the power to kill the prince, but has to complete three impossible tasks first. That does sound interesting. I'm glad I added it. Next up, I have another horror book. 
How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, which doesn't have any real information as of yet. Right now it just says that it's hilarious and terrifying about how your past and your family can haunt you like nothing else. And then lastly, 10 to 15 SFF books that I have never read from the author, but like the cover or the title or the blurb did something for me and I've convinced myself that I must read it and I'm going to love it. One is called How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. It's it for fans of Station Eleven, so that's why it's on my list. Um, we have a bunch of characters linked together over hundreds of years of humanity's struggles to rebuild itself in the aftermath of a climate plague. That's it. I'm not going to get into the synopsis because it's long. So the next one I have on my list is called The Blue Beautiful World and I want to see the cover so bad. It says this near future sci-fi novel imagines a post-climate disaster earth suffused by VR tech. Next up is a duology. I love the idea of a duology, so I added it. Uh, it's called Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. I actually think I've had this one on my TBR for years. So it's finally coming out, we got a cover. And it says it's about a young woman's quest to free her mother, but it pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. Next, uh, this one also was the cover that pulled me in. Not because it's so beautiful and magical and I love it, it's because it's upsetting and it has made me intrigued. This is a sci-fi queer horror story. It is another post-apocalyptic novel following trans women and men on a grotesque journey of survival. Standalone fantasy I want to pick up. I think this one's YA. It's called A Far Wilder Magic. I think this one just being a standalone fantasy is what intrigued me because I much prefer that to a series. And it's about a girl trying to unlock an ancient magical secret. It also has to do with alchemy. Next up I have a book called Mary An Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy. What did it for me with this one? I think just the fact that it's from Tor and it's horror. Mary is a quiet middle-aged woman doing her best to blend into the background, but lately things have been changing inside Mary and she discovers her experiences are echoes of an infamous serial killer and then the killings begin. Next up was a cover pick, What We Harvest by Anne Freistat. Oh, it also said for fans of Wilder Girls, so that's what did it for me. It takes place in an idyllic small town, also did it for me. Poisoned by its past, we're following one girl who must fight the strange disease that's slowly claiming everyone she loves. Another YA standalone fantasy that made my list is called I Am the Ghost in Your House by Maria Romasco Moore. And it says it's a wildly unique story of an invisible girl struggling to see herself in a world obsessed with appearances. I also have Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. I haven't read from her before, but I've been intrigued by her. We're following 17 year old Ivy on summer break. There's a stranger who appears in the middle of the road. We're back in her mother's timeline at the same age. And she has a fling with the supernatural and discovers a city of magical possibilities. Guess what's next? Another sci-fi from Tor. This one's called A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emery's. It's another climate inspired story. It's 2083 and we have a woman who awakens to unknown pollutants and stumbles upon the first alien visitors to Earth. I have a couple others on my list that don't have covers and I'm, I can't guarantee they're going to be 2022 ones. So I will just link to my most anticipated list and you can see anything else that I didn't mention, everything I did mention. Let me know what you're most excited about, if anything on my list or anything you think that I should have on my radar. And I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!